Hi, this is Josh. I'm a pharmacist with PharmacistTips.com. I'm going to tell you a bit about the medication Propranolol. I'm going to talk about the dosage side effects. We're going to talk about using Propranolol for public speaking. We're going to talk about using it for migraine prevention as some of the typical uses of this medication. The topics we'll cover are what is Propranolol, the Propranolol uses, the dosage forms uh, commonly available in the retail pharmacy, how to take the medication, how quick does Propranolol work. We're going to talk about specifically using Propranolol for public speaking, using it to, for migraine prevention. Then we're going to talk about the common dosage in general. And then we'll cover side effects as well as warnings and precautions. Now, as with all my videos, this information is for informational purposes only, and it's not intended to serve as a substitute for the consultation, diagnosis, and or medical treatment of a qualified physician or healthcare provider. So what is propranolol? It's a medication in the family known as beta adrenergic blockers, also in, considered an antiarrhythmic. Its main effect, it lowers blood pressure, it decreases the heart rate, it reduces the oxygen demand of the heart, and it has a vasoconstriction effect in the extremities as well as uh, the brain. And we'll talk about that a little bit more with migraine prevention. So some of the typical uses, angina, that's heart pain. It's going to reduce the oxygen need for the heart, and so that can help with the angina. Atrial fibrillation, so that's a, a rhythm, rhythm disorder of the heart. Tremor, so like shakiness, um, that sort of thing. The medication can be used to help with that and is commonly used for that. High blood pressure, migraine prevention, and uh, immediately after Heart attacks, uh, propranolol is sometimes used. Off-label uses are uses that medicine was not specifically studied for, but they have found over time it may help with these conditions. Uh, movement disorders due to certain uh, antipsychotic medications, so kind of fall in that tremor category as well. Performance anxiety or like stage fright um, and thyroid storm. So certain thyroid conditions where you're going to have a racing heart and things like that, propranolol may be used to treat some of the symptoms associated with those. Uh, the dosage forms available, uh, tablets, tablets come in the 10, 20, 40, 80, 60, and 80 milligram. The extended release come in the 60, 80, and 120, and 160 milligram capsules. How to take that? The tablets are taken on an empty stomach, and you want to maintain a consistent schedule to maintain a constant level of that medication in your body. The capsules can be taken with or without food, but we do want to be sure to take them the same way each time. So how quickly does it start working? The tablets, um, the onset is one to two hours, and the duration is typically six to 12 hours, whereas the extended release capsules, uh, onset occurs in one to two hours, much like the tablets, but duration can be 24 hours or longer. And the full effect, if using it for high blood pressure, may take a week or so to fully realize. Um, so certain conditions, it does take time for the medicine to start working. So what about the dosage for public speaking? Typically, it's the immediate release 10 milligram tablet one hour prior to the event. What about uh, diet, migraine dosing? Um, again, we talked about how it seems to have an effect on the blood vessels and that um, migraines seem to come on when there is a, a when the blood vessels dilate. So this kind of prevents that from occurring. Uh, the dosage should be increased slowly because um, many times if we're taking it for migraine prevention, we don't have any high blood pressure issues or thing like that. So we have to get used to the effects of the medication. Immediate release tablets generally not used for migraine prevention, although they, they could be, they'd have to be taken three to four times a day, starting with a daily dose around 80 milligrams, no more than 240 milligrams. But typically, we do see the extended release capsule used to prevent migraines, starting with a dose usually around 80 milligrams once a day, up to a maximum of 240 milligrams a day as tolerated. Other, your other treatment dosage, again, the tablets, kind of the same thing, started 40 milligrams two to four times a day. So the tablets, maybe not quite as convenient as you have to take it more often. 
um, and the max dose around 320 milligrams a day. However, some heart conditions, uh, the tablets may be preferred. This medicine is not used for a large number of heart conditions, so we see a small percentage. Your doctor will help determine the appropriate dose and the appropriate dosing schedule if it is determined that this medication is appropriate for your condition. The ER capsules, uh, again, we start at that 80 milligram dose up to 640 milligrams a day. I have never seen anybody on that high of dose, but it, it, there's a potential for a dose that high in certain conditions, and one would certainly have to be very slowly worked up to that dose. Most common side effect, low blood pressure. And uh, many people get used to it and when they're on the medicine longer. Other side effects uh, occurring in less than 10% of people. So heart rhythm issues, uh, bronchospasm, constipation, fatigue, drowsiness, headache, uh, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, difficulty breathing, blood sugar issues, cold extremities that due to that vas vasoconstriction, um, it could reduce blood flow to the extremities, impotence, itching, rash, that sort of thing can occur. Some of the warnings, uh, we don't want to stop this abruptly, especially if you've worked up to a high dose that uh, you know, we just, it should not be stopped abruptly. You need to taper the dose down. Caution in heart failure. There may be a certain point when heart failure gets so bad that this medication would need to be stopped. If you have a heart failure, you should be monitored closely by a, um, a physician. You may need to stop it before certain kinds of surgery. Caution in diabetics as it can sometimes have um, effects on blood sugar and could possibly mask the symptoms of low blood sugar. Caution with thyroid disorders as we saw earlier it is used to treat symptoms during th with certain thyroid conditions, but it could mask um, thyroid conditions as well, so you wouldn't be properly diagnosed. Caution in folks with breathing problems, as this can sometimes cause difficulty breathing. Caution with Raynaud disease, that's where we already have some vasoconstriction issues in the extremities and a medication like this could possibly make it worse. Sometimes uh, propranolol can worsen psoriasis. Uh, smokers tend to process propranolol quicker than other people, so this may not be an ideal medication for smokers. Uh, I appreciate you watching. If you like videos like these, uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you have questions about this medication, something I didn't cover in the video, please go ahead and ask in the comments below. I will do my best to answer that for you, and thanks for watching.